Good morning, afternoon, and evening. My name is Antti Kosunen. I'm partner at Nest Home. And today we have a very interesting topic. How to collaborate in PSD2 era. PSD2 brings great opportunities for the smartest ones and a threat to others. Third parties will have an access to some bank data and collaboration with startups is the best way to create new innovations or new business models to maximize the benefit of the new situation, as well as it's a way to manage the risk of losing the business. Our thesis is that the only way to create innovations customers will actually buy is to design them together with customers. And startups are the best ones in customer-driven development. But before that, a quick, a quick introduction of uh, Nestoma. Nestoma Venture Accelerator engages banks and startups to collaborate. We have built uh, and run 19 on-site accelerators uh, for banks and corporations, collab corporations for new products and learnings. We have been serving companies like uh, Nordea Bank, Nokia, Microsoft and many others and we have operated in six different countries. And today our managing partner Topi Järvinen will talk about learnings how banks and startups should collaborate. And then one of our customers, uh, Nordea Bank's Chief Digital Officer, Juan McLeod, will talk about Nordea's experience of uh, startup accelerator that we've been running together for uh, three times so far. And then uh, Nestholmas partner Mika Eriksson will present uh, Global Fintech Accelerator to way for banks to collaborate with each other with the aim of getting the best startups. And during this uh, half an hour session, we have a chat window open. So please type your questions. We will be answering as many as we have time at the end of this session. And now it's time for uh, Topi Arvin and uh, Nestolmas Matching Park. Here are some learnings based on our experience on helping startups and banks to collaborate. If you work for a bank or in a large corporation, you may feel that you still rule the world. You still drive the economy, you still make big numbers, but every once in a while you come across a startup that comes out of nowhere and just grabs customers and, or business from you. Sure enough, things are changing. Just look at what the kinds of opportunities the European PSD2 regulation will open up also for the new entrants, such as startups. Now, should you worry? Are startups your enemies? We say absolutely not, but you need to act now and collaborate with them. In fact, based on our experience, banks and startups are perfect complements. Now, let's look at first at banks. They have lots of resources, money and people. They also have good understanding of the market right now. They may even have lots of good ideas, but they are slow with their processes and legacy systems and models. And a lot of times they just lack courage to uh, try the new things. At the same time, startups are the opposite. They think outside of the box all the time. And they're really fast at developing new services and taking learning from the customers. So, banks and startups are perfect complements. They can learn from each other, but also you can test and enable new types of businesses in collaboration. This is also a very low-risk way to innovate. It used to be that whenever you had a great new idea, you'd hire a bunch of people and hope for the best. If it didn't succeed, you ended up with the, everyone accusing each other and laying off people. As a result, you learned nothing from the failures. With startups, it's different. If you succeed, great, you have a new business together. However, if you fail, no one needs to be sacked. You both learn and can create better businesses in the future based on those learnings, separately or together. But it's not easy to work with the startups. It doesn't happen by mingling at startup events, and you cannot use your own processes on them, because by doing so, you will crush the entrepreneurs and the innovation. Also, you need to be serious about it. You cannot leave it to a few innovation guys at the company. In our experience, there are a couple of critical factors to make this work. Treat startups like true partners, not as outsourcing companies. The entrepreneurial drive is a great force. 
Use it to your advantage. Don't tie it down with your processes. The business leadership needs to drive the collaboration. Working with startups is not just another R&D activity. It needs to be in front of and center of your business plans. You need to use outside help. It's important that you concentrate on your own business and developing that without all the startup hassle. Engage the entire organization. Everyone can learn from the startups. The collaboration will help the entire organization to be better prepared for the future challenges. Thank you, Topi. Excellent learnings. Partnerships with startups, they need to be at equal level. And you must engage your organization. Many people need to be attached to the accelerator program at the same time when there needs to be a strong decision from top management that you need to be more agile, you need to be more customer oriented and iterating your cases together with the with customers so that it's a lean process. Iteration cycle needs to be very, very short. And only way to learn how to work with startups is to actually to work with startups. That's why we believe that we have to be inside the organization. So the proximity is one of the key success uh, factors in, in accelerators. Be close to them and uh, give the risks to data startups, try out different kinds of things uh, and let the startups iterate it together with you and together with your customers so that you'll have whatever is that you, you, are, you want to get out of this kind of program. And uh, some practical examples, what has been learned uh, is next. Nordea's uh, chief digital officer, Ewan McLeod, he will be talking what has he learned uh, when Nordea has had the accelerator, so we've run three of them for, 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 for Nordea so far. So very in, interesting uh, thinking by Nordea's chief digital officer. So why do we need to work with startups? Well, the answer is fast. We have to be fast and startups, as we well know, are very, very fast at bringing great services to market. Big banks with legacy infrastructure, not so much. Uh, it's not necessarily a core competency of a big bank to be able to run fast. So working with startups, we are forced to embrace a different method of working, a different reality uh, of, of working. Um, so from an educational standpoint, that's business critical to us. Um, but actually from the value standpoint, in terms of opening our minds on what's capable, what's possible, um, it's really exciting and also rather business critical to us as well that we're able to partner with startups to bring services to our customers faster. And nowadays we are completely in the view that I should have an update, a new thing on my phone every two weeks. That's how Facebook works, for example, and that's how I expect my banking services to work. I expect new and exciting things on a regular basis. So we here at Nordea have to be able to run fast and by partnering with startups, by working with, start uh, with, with startups, and by adopting their methodologies, we can get the great stuff to market for the customer. So what did we learn from the accelerator? Well, uh, huge, huge amounts. So let's let first come to education. Like the, um, we learned so much from the startups on how they run fast, how they work, the methodologies they tend to adopt, the can-do attitude, the work-through-the-night attitude, uh, the excitement and energy. That's not necessarily something that we have um, been known for. I think we should say, uh, from a, the context of big banks. Um, when you're looking at the huge legacy uh, infrastructure that we've got, it's tempting to sit back and, and look at things in a certain and a predictable manner. And in, in many cases, we have to do that. We are using and, and, and holding so much customer data. The transaction information is really important to us. We have to do things the right way doesn't mean we have to be slow. So the number one thing that we have learned from an accelerator, from the accelerator, was the, the methodology of how these companies are working. Now, it's easy if you bring someone in from the, the outside and say they can tell you that, but actually seeing that, seeing that happen 
is really important. Let me give you an example. This is my my, my second point about speed here. Um, we had one startup that, that, that came in and we thought they were fantastic. The Nest Homo team thought they were fantastic. Uh, we got them onto the accelerator. Um, we, we, we cheered them and we brought their service in to, uh, to one of our colleagues in the business. And we said, so, what do you think? And the guy said, love it. We, this is really cool, but sorry, it's illegal. Now that had escaped our view, it had escaped Nest Almost, you know, because we, we, we hadn't been thinking about some of the, the really, really important um, uh, elements, and that's why you bring it to the business to get their view. Uh, so the startup listened. They listened really, really intently as our business uh, uh, colleague said, Look, I'm sorry, this, 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 that doesn't work, and that is why. And this is a learning point for us here, right? Because we said, Thank you, thanks very much. And the startup said, thank you. We, we, we all parted ways. And the startup said, could we, could we meet you next week? And the business person said, well, okay. You know what I'm about to say, right? The startup went away. They listened to the feedback. They programmed through the night uh, across the week and brought back a new service modeled on what the business guy had been talking about. And you can just imagine the response of our business. So, what? What? Have you, did you just do this? And that learning, the ability for the, uh, these startups to, to surprise and delight us um, has been paramount for Nordea. Uh, so with that company in question, we're now busy working out a commercial uh, arrangement with them because they, they were able to pivot. They listened to our feedback and that's why you do these things, right? We test and we learn. Um, they've listened, they, they took our business feedback, they've changed the, the service and our business people love it. Um, now, isn't that fantastic? Now, that, that feedback loop is measured in months, dare I say years, in, in traditional IT terms. Uh, so being able to work with uh, the accelerator to bring that innovation in, the, the great thinking that we thought was great, and then being able to change it, respond to it, and then bring it back into the business, fantastic. So what has changed as a result of the accelerator? Well, uh, let me give you one, a, a, a commercial view. Uh, 14 companies went through the accelerator last year. Nine of them we are in commercial discussions with. So that, that is fantastic. That's a great strike rate. But ideally, we would work with uh, all uh, of the, the accelerator companies. So what has changed physically here in Nordea? Loads. Uh, we now have hundreds of mentors uh, across the business. Um, and those, those are individuals that put their hand up and said, look, I, I, any, any partnership, anything, any, any startup, I'd love to, love to help. Fantastic. So of those, those, those hundreds of people are now infusing others across the company that you know, we have to run fast, that we have to uh, listen to uh, the, the wider ecosystem, work with the wider ecosystem, partner with the wider ecosystem. So that's really, really cool and, and measurable, if you like, in terms of seeing um, the, the, the benefits around the company. But let me talk about some of the more boring uh, but really important elements. Um, with the Accelerator, we have to be able to work with startups, and we are talking four or five person companies. And you know, the first question we would normally ask a company uh, when, when they're, they're coming for us to do business with them is, well, how long have you been trading? And we were expecting years as an answer, right? And in many cases, the answer is, well, weeks, or yesterday, or we haven't made the company yet. So we've had to get very comfortable with that process and then adopt completely different or, or enhanced processes from a legal standpoint, from a, um, a procurement standpoint. In fact, from every operational standpoint, we've had to adjust because we, otherwise we can't bring this innovation in. It's all very nice talking about it, but ultimately we want to bring this to the customer or, or bring the benefit into Nordea. To do so, we have to do the right thing. Um, of course, protecting our customers, protecting Nordea, protecting the startup as well um, with the right agreements and the right frameworks. But it doesn't work to put, uh, you know, a 30-page contract in front of a startup that doesn't exist yet. Um, so we've had to do lots of learning um, and lots of process change here in Nordea. And it, it, it's quite straightforward because you sit with a legal team and you say, look, this is what we'd like to do. And, you know, in, in, in many cases, it's actually quite straightforward to, to create that construct. But it's a lot of work to get it done. Brilliant, Yuan. Just brilliant. That was uh, Juan McLeod, uh, Nordea's uh, chief digital officer. My prediction is that Nordea will be one of the winning banks. And 
the reason for that is the attitude. Uh, you are, was saying that there has been a cultural change uh, due to the accelerator, so that they learn to listen, learn and iterate to get the products that customers want. But already there's a right attitude to work with equal partners inside Norda. So that's what I've learned when working with them. So highly appreciated that. And if I pick some of the key, key things, what, 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 uh, what he said, that time critical, everything has to, be, has to happen fast, not years, but weeks. Also the amazing results, nine commercial discussions out of uh, 14 startups, amazing number. He also said that the, this is business critical stuff. It's business critical education, something that they must learn. They must learn how to work with startups as well as uh, how to work uh, utilizing the methodology. And learning again is not the thing. Using the learnings is the core thing. And when being in an accelerator, being a part of an accelerator, it becomes a habit. And that, that's one of the things what Yuan says is that it's a methodology that is being taken into use. So just brilliant. And uh, then we have the last uh, presentation from uh, Mika Eriksson, one of the partners at Nestholma. He will be presenting an accelerator program with an aim of getting as many startups to apply to the program and then sharing the applications afterwards. Because doesn't matter how good of an accelerator program you run, the one of the key success, success factors is that how do you get the best startups to work for your, start, for your accelerator instead of your competitors? So now it's time for Mika Eriksson, please. We at Nestholma engage banks and startups to collaborate. We have done 19 startup accelerator programs and activities with companies such as Nokia, British Telecom, Microsoft and Telecom Italia. During the last couple of years, we have been working closely with Nordia Bank and have run three accelerator programs with them so far. So what have we learned about the collaboration? First thing is that the best results are achieved when you have the best startups to work with. And finding the quality startups is a real issue. Competition for the best startups is fierce. Second thing is that the innovations are global. And this is for the most local and regional banks a huge issue. How to attract startups from other locations to work with you. Thirdly, once you have managed to lure a startup to work with you, how do you do that in practice? Are your processes your people and your company culture ready to work with them. As one bank executive said, it takes only one bank to kill a startup. And that is something that you don't want to happen. So in other words, how to get as many as of your people as possible involved in collaboration with the startups. How to re-energize the people to work with the startups and third parties and to work like a startups, agile and fast, accepting failure and capable of pivoting when needed. To tackle these three challenges, to get the best startups, to access innovations globally, and to work with the startups without killing them, we have designed Global Fintech Accelerator. Global Fintech Accelerator is a perfect solution for preparing your bank to partnering in the PSD2 era. What is Global Fintech Accelerator? It is a program for five non-competing banks to join forces with other banks to enjoy benefits of global program while still having your own local accelerator program tailored to your needs. Global Fintech Accelerator gives access to the most disruptive innovators in the industry, globally, better and stronger startups. By combining the brands of the five banks the program will attract far more and better startups than any single bank could do from all over the world. Learning from the other banks and from the startups. Banks entering PSD2 era share the same challenges, yet they are not competing. They all try to figure out things like what kind of services should we offer, 
what kind of business models should we implement it, and so on. As the other banks are wrestling and trying to solve the same challenges, Global Fintech Accelerator gives you a chance to collaborate with those banks. So to share, learn, be more competitive. And finally, there will be 50 plus bank approved startups graduating from the program, capable of solving challenges that PSD2 is bringing. So to wrap up, Global Fintech Accelerator is a tool to be ready for the PSD2. It is to join forces with other non-competing banks, to share a pool of global startups and innovations, to learn and share how to collaborate with third parties. In other words, to test your processes, assumptions and business models in a safe environment to be ready for the PSD2 era. There was a uh, question about uh, about the uh, how to uh, make the co-creation work uh, uh, iterate and develop in a lean way, and also similar questions about the speed of the co collaboration. And um, um, I think it's a mindset. Uh, you should have a very uh, uh, different mindset of when entering something like this. Uh, the uh, the employees of the corporation need to have a mindset where they want to learn to work in a different way. That's one of the essential things, because uh, otherwise, if you just continue working the same way, um, you will not learn a lot and you will not gain a lot. Uh, and that's also the way you will get those lean things, you, sort of the lean way of working and more iterative way of working that you can bring into uh, other stuff as well. And then two more questions that, I, that we always get, so I can ask, answer those also. So what is the stage of startups that you should be working with? And uh, the answer is that it depends on your objectives. If you want to get something that you co-create, something that will be adjusted according to your needs, uh, take early stage startups. If you want to design your organization to be more lean, to work like a, like a startup, work with the early stage startups. That is the best way to learn. Later stage, so to say, startups are a channel to acquire services or products. It's a little bit different kind of a game. Uh, you need to do that. You need to work with, with growth companies also, but uh, accelerators are brilliant in making you more agile. And that's the reason to work with early stage companies. Uh, said that, what we do, we always require from startups that they have a product ready at the moment of uh, ending uh, of, the, of the accelerator program. Other question is that how ready should you be? And what I'm saying that you are never ready, so start it today. And start it today in a way that you have the accelerator program, you need the critical mass on it. If you just work with few startups, then your organization doesn't develop, then you don't learn to be uh, compatible with startups. So work it early enough and have the critical mass on, on your operations. And now we have received 30 minutes from you. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, please take a look at our website, uh, nestholma.com for additional information. We also have several blog posts there. And uh, then uh, there are uh, also, we will share this presentation that has been recorded uh, and uh, so you will receive an email from us of this uh, presentation. Please share that also. And I guess we have one more question. What could you name most common areas of business collaboration? And is it like payments or something? Um, well, yeah, the, the things we see a lot, uh, of course, payments is, is, is one thing, but I think sort of transaction-based uh, uh, sort of core fintech stuff uh, is only one area. Then you have, uh, uh, of course, you related to that, you have uh, all kinds of artificial intelligence, uh, people are looking at blockchain, uh, but then we, there is a lot of uh, areas that we've seen also that the banks are interested in, such as uh, just making the uh, customer care uh, more efficient or more customer friendly or or being able able to uh, uh, offer new types of services. So it's a very wide range of things, not just the sort of the uh, uh, transaction related things that uh, banks uh, are interested in right now. 
And also, if you're looking for a blockchain technologies related to certain transactions or certain whatever that may be, or artificial intelligence stuff, uh, we say that 80% of the uh, startups you choose should be something that you know in advance and then take 20% uh, of startups as wide cards. You end up learning a lot. But now the time is done. Thank you very much for your participation. Thanks. Thanks.